Suns make a blockbuster move. This is a really good franchise that doesn't have a championship. They're tired of waiting. They now have Kevin Durant. So just say it out loud. That's one of my rules in life. That's one of my rules in life. If you ever get in trouble at like 3 in the morning, say it out loud. 3 in the morning, convenience store, drinking too much. Doesn't sound like you should have been out. Say it out loud. Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, really good coach, veteran Hall of Fame point guard, and a big that can run the floor. I think Phoenix this morning, argument, best team in the West. Now, I don't know about the chemistry, but um, hey, listen, Brooklyn got a lot of picks, so we'll talk about them in six years. Right now, we're going to talk about Kevin Durant and the Suns. I am genuinely happy for Kevin Durant. Way too much talent to be in a franchise that's up and down, chaotic, new coach. Ben Simmons, you're getting nothing there. James Harden came in out of shape. Whatever you believe about the vaccine, if you're part of a team, probably should get it. In the end, Kevin Durant made a really bad decision, and that's okay. We all make them, but don't double down on them. Just say, you know what? Made a mistake. Kevin Durant now has made three moves in his career. One ended up being brilliant, Golden State. One, Brooklyn, not great. The other one feels like, to me, it's fantastic. And what I like about this move for Kevin Durant, it's the first move without huge drama or expectation. So he joins the Warriors. They just won without him. You, you got to win the championship. They won without you. If you don't win with the Warriors, Steve Kerr, Draymond Green, Klay Thompson, Steph Curry, dude, it's on you. And he goes, didn't love it. He goes to Brooklyn with Kyrie. He's going to prove everybody wrong. Not a lot of expectations. Boston, good. Milwaukee, good. They have great cultures. This move, Warriors still, the dynasty in the West. Everybody's falling in love with John Morant and Memphis. And, oh, keep your eye on Denver. Don't trust him. Phoenix never won a championship. People have been banging on Chris Paul. I don't know why for years he's too old. Devin Booker's good, but he's not that. DeAndre Ayton, everybody was selling the farm on him a year ago. Even his coach was mad at him. There's no pressure here. Love the move. Kevin's going to come in. I mean, this team is exactly what championship teams are. Rookie head coaches, we've seen them implode. Veteran head coach everybody likes. A communicator. Really smart veteran point guard who doesn't need to score, but can. Two wings, one a guard, one a big. Both can score, but they're both kind of chill. Like Kevin Durant's not going to demand the final shot. Devin Booker's not going to demand the final shot. They're not as ball-centric as like a Luka, who I like, but needs the ball. Harden needs the ball. And Devin Booker and Durant, you can give them a ball late in the shot clock, they can hit it. And then I got a guy in DeAndre Ayton. Maybe he's not what people project, but he's big. He can give you 17 points. He can run the floor. You need to have some rim protection. I like it. Is their bench thin? Yeah, so is Golden State's. I mean, Golden State's playing like seven guys. <laughs> I mean, that's all they play. I don't love Phoenix's bench, but we all know this in the playoffs. We all know this. The bench shrinks. You play seven to eight guys. I mean, I got news for you. Celtics aren't going to 10, 11 guys. Milwaukee, they want Middleton, Ingles, Giannis. They want their guys back on the floor. So I love this. Uh, and again, so much of life and happiness is expectations. If, if Phoenix gets better, because we all kind of look at Phoenix now as, yeah, it didn't work. Let's say they get to the Western Conference Finals, and I think with this roster they will. And you lose to the Warriors in six. Nobody's blaming KD. It made you significantly better. I don't know how this looks in Phoenix in three years. KD's getting older. Chris Paul's getting older. Those Brooklyn picks could be really tasty in about three years. But today the story is KD resurrecting his career, and I like it a lot. All right. Um... <laughs> Now, this is a story I knew about before I lost my phone. Um, the Lakers, I've been banging on the Lakers. The Lakers don't like me, which is hard to believe because 
I'm very likable. Uh, the Lakers don't like me. I've been banging on this franchise for years, and I live in Los Angeles, and they look at me weird if I'm in the arena. Um, I can't believe they pulled this off. I can't believe they got this much. They gave up an awful contract and one pick and they got two shooters in Malik Beasley and D'Angelo Russell. Two guys that can shoot. Um, they also got rid of the worst contract arguably in the league and somebody that couldn't play with LeBron and Westbrook. No reason to pick on him, but he doesn't work with LeBron. And then they also need like versatile wing defenders. They just don't have them. And they got two of those too. And I'm like, how? It is hard to make these trades. I mean, I mean, nothing against the Jazz, because all the Jazz want right now is picks, and nothing against the T-Wolves, who, by the way, got better because Mike Conley's one of the smartest guys in the league. He works great with Rudy Gobert. D'Angelo Russell didn't. And let's slow down on the D'Angelo Russell love. Lakers had him once. They let him go. He's bounced around the league. Here's what we know about him. He's skilled, but he's really inconsistent. He's not a leader, and he wore Steve Kerr out. Virtually everybody works for the Warriors. D'Angelo Russell didn't. My takeaway is he's good for the rest of the season. He won't end his career as a Laker. That is okay. You got out of the Westbrook contract. Ask yourself this if you were a Laker fan. If this morning you just got out of the Westbrook contract and got like a bench shooter, you'd be like, we're a better team. The Lakers are absolutely a playoff team today. Now, where are they? I don't know. But LeBron always makes, always makes his shooters better. He did it with Battier and Mike Miller. He did it with Ray Allen. He did it Kyrie. Even his bigs, Kevin Love and Chris Bosh, have to sacrifice their game a little. But he gets some great looks. Outside of Magic Johnson, LeBron does as good a job as any guy with size I've ever seen getting teammates great shots. So Malik Beasley's an excellent shooter. He'll get the best shots of his life. D'Angelo Russell's a bit more streaky. He'll get the best shots of his life. Listen, Westbrook got shots. He just couldn't hit them. I mean, he just, just couldn't hit the shots. So, and also, everything is relative. So compared to the Kevin Durant move, it feels like, yeah, a bunch of disparate parts. But it's not. The Lakers had two huge flaws. Not enough versatile wing defenders and players. They got two. Uh, not enough shooters. Uh, they got two. Who cares? They gave up a draft pick. I've said this before. In Los Angeles, you can sell draft picks to smaller markets. Memphis, uh, uh, Milwaukee, or Salt Lake City. You can sell draft picks in the future. Those almost feel like college towns. Very hopeful, very optimistic. L.A.'s got a beach. It's got mountains. It's got two of this, two, two of that, two of this, two of that. Things to do. You can't sell 2029. Nobody cares. The Dodgers are too good. The Clippers are viable. Lincoln Riley now at USC. Like, the teams are too good. You got to be good now. And I, I, <laughs> the Lakers got young and versatile. They're better shooters, complimentary pieces at the trade deadline. And all they really had was a bad Westbrook contract. How? I mean, I got I, I have been, and, and by the way, it's substance over flashy. And, you know, one of the things, like when you don't have money to waste, you don't waste money, right? Kardashians probably waste more money a week than I make a year, right? They have money. When you have big city flash, like Los Angeles, it's easy to get flashy players. And so the Lakers often go flash over substance. It's like the Yankees often pay for a player who really doesn't fit John Carlos Stanton. We already had Aaron Judge. What's the point? But when you have all that money, it's seductive. You're not going to make that move if you're the Brewers. You're not going to make that move if you're a small market. But in Los Angeles, it's seductive. It's a town of celebrities, stars. Good God, LeBron set the record. There's a thousand stars. And so the Lakers get seduced and often go the star route over the substance route. Not this time. Substance, versatility, youth, shooters. He gave up a, a draft pick. One, who cares? It all kicks off Super Bowl Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. 
Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.